Hello everyone and, uh, and welcome to, uh, to Beecroft Live. Um, I'm hoping that I don't have too many technical difficulties today because uh, so far we've had a few, haven't we? Um, yeah. On my side. Um, <laughs> Hello. So Wendy, you're going to be the, uh, the, the, sort of the backup and, and you will take over at a moment's notice, I'm sure. We'll see. Uh, so look, <laughs> Thank you for joining us live. Uh, we're talking today about the BBKA and the BBKA exam series because obviously uh, most of you beekeepers hopefully will know that there are some exams that us as beekeepers can take and we wanted to sort of look at it and explore um, what it's all about. Um, do you need to take them? Uh, what are the options available to you? Um, and, and sort of the process and, and how you can work through the exam series really. So. Um, Obviously, I've just mentioned uh, Wendy there for a second. So, Wendy, I don't know if you just want to say hi and give a brief overview as to who you are and what you're doing with uh, with Beecraft. Okay, uh, I'm Wendy. I am a beekeeper myself. I'm, I'm James's deputy. Um, yes, well, yes, yeah, sometimes. Um, <laughs> you take uh, the lead more than I do. <laughs> oh dear. And uh, with Beecraft, I work very closely with the associations keeping in contact with them, offering them support with training uh, by way of back copies and obviously trying to encourage new beekeepers to subscribe to Beecraft, which um, is the best beekeeping magazine in the world, as voted at Apimondia twice. We've had a gold medal, so um, it is a good publication. And uh, at the moment, I'm promoting specifically books, um, special offer on books that are on the BBKA reading list that are Print, uh, printed by Beecraft. So um, uh, I'll tell you a bit about those later on. I'm sure there'll be a, an opportunity for that. And um, if necessary, I'll take over from James if he vanishes, um, leaving us with a funny face on the screen as he sometimes does. <laughs> I will. It's guaranteed to happen at some point. I'm going to keep on disappearing, so I do apologise. Um, but yeah, we've got a, we've had a couple of questions in already actually about books. So uh, Pablo from uh, from Newton Avenue, I know, has put some questions in. So uh, we'll mention the, the books a little bit later on. Um, but obviously, a discussion about the BBK exams would not be um, a discussion without members of the BBK joining us. So um, we're very fortunate to have Val with us. Um, Val, do you want to say hi and just give a little introduction as to who you are, what you do, and uh, and why you're here? Yeah. Hi everybody, uh, I'm Val Francis and I'm the BBKA Examinations Board Secretary, um, which means I'm responsible really for implementing the examinations across the country. Uh, I work with about uh, 80 local exam secretaries. Uh, the local exam secretaries organise the basic assessments um, and the, the venues and invigilators for mod moderators and I organise all the other assessments. and. Uh, maintain the database, send out the results, send out the certificates uh, and answer all questions and help members into examinations as much as I possibly can. Probably That's quite impressive. Time. 80 exam secretaries, I never realised it's as many as that. I've lost track of the number of areas we've got. Good God, That's, um, it, I mean that shows you just how big this sort of operation is, doesn't it? I mean just how, how much of an organisation yeah. is needed behind it to just sort of put all the administrative stuff in, in behind the scenes. So. No doubt you're most of the most organised person ever. I couldn't do that. Ah, I wish. Yeah. Wendy, Wendy knows my organisational capacities, which is not, which is, <laughs> which is not brilliant to say the least. <laughs> and uh, and I think well, we're privileged. Um, John, do you want to go ahead and sort of uh, introduce yourself as as sort of your new role? Yes. Well, I'll start at the beginning. I decided to take the BBKA exams in the 1970s and became a master beekeeper in 1986 because I thought well that would be it and then in 1991 I was appointed as Val's predecessor the exam board secretary a job I did for 15 years till Val took over 10 years ago so between us we've been involved with it for some time I'm now the moderator of the exam board there are three assistant moderators at the moment and we're responsible for the standard and maintaining the standards the same in each of the exams and what James was hinting at I was appointed last month as the president of the British Beekeepers Association as well so there's an introduction from me. So we're graced by royalty today, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> we can't, uh, can't argue with that but no John and Val thank you so much for joining us obviously it's, it's, a, it's a great privilege to have you here and we're hoping at some point though it's stupidly early in the morning over in Nepal to have Simon Croson uh, join us who 
Um, but if I'm understanding correctly, he runs all the educational side of this operation, doesn't he? Yeah, he's got a special role um, assisting areas with educational projects um, and trying to help wherever he can to promote those. Okay. No, oh, James. James seems to have um, seems to have gone offline again. So it looks like it's down to me. So I'm actually going to to go into the first um, the first question um, that uh, well. James, are you back? I'm I'm back probably for a minute. So I apologise to everyone who's uh, who's just tuning in. I'm going to disappear constantly in this. Uh, in this right. Day. Okay. I was just going to go on to to ask. Um, Val and, and John for their individual views. Why should beekeepers considering taking consider taking exams and is it essential? Um, so Val, I'd, would you like to take that one first? Um, well I think the first thing to say is that no it's not essential. We're all hobbyist beekeepers and we do this for pleasure, for fun um, and examinations don't suit everybody. So it's for anybody who's interested in, in doing examinations. Um, why would you want to? Um, I think most people do it to further their learning. They want to do learn more about beekeeping, learn more, learn more about bees, um, perhaps off the usual beaten track of beekeeping. So they might want to learn more about bee behavior or, or um, anatomy and so on. Um, and just reading books gets a bit dry and boring. So working towards something like the module exams uh, with a group, uh, learning together, uh, makes it much more interesting and, and motivating. Um, a lot of people do that and don't bother taking the exams at the end of it, and that learning is good. Uh, and altogether, I, I think my, my particular hobby horse is that it keeps learning uh, about beekeeping and knowledge about beekeeping alive. Um, more people know mm -hmm. about things you know, off the beaten track, they spread it in conversations and talks that they give. Uh, and I think that's very important. I mean, of course, some people take exams, um, particularly the practical assessments, because they need to. There's a growing uh, requirement now for um, beekeepers who want to keep their bees on allotments to take the basic assessment. Mm -hmm. And beekeepers who want to sell their honey on farmers markets. Very often they ask for the basic assessment. So uh, you know, a lot of people taking the basic assessment have that uh, motivation to do it. Um, right. But I think you know, those were the main things that I would think of. I don't know if John can add any to that. You've covered most of it. I took the exams um, and when I started doing them it made, meant I had a structured way of reading books and I know studying the theory made me a much better beekeeper. And I think that's the main thing people should take on board it gives you a structured way of becoming a much better beekeeper. Yeah, I think I think you're absolutely right with that. One of the things that, um, in fact, let me put that question in another way as well, which is, I, I know when I started beekeeping, that I I didn't feel pressured to do it, but I, I felt obliged to certainly take the basic um, very early on because it was it was sort of like a, an aspiration after the first year of beekeeping to. I've had a year of experience and now I'm ready to take my exams. Would you say that people should have a little bit of experience underneath them before they start, for example, on the basic? Let's let's talk about the, the very sort of the lowest level. Is that a, a good time frame or would you recommend longer or start it immediately? Where would you say they should start? Should I go on? Go on then. Oh, well. I'll, I'll come in there. I'm not sure if John's there. Um, Experience is definitely helps towards the basic and makes it more, more useful. Um, a year really is a minimum. Um, some would recommend two years, but certainly a good solid year, which includes all aspects of beekeeping. Because parts of the syllabus uh, and parts of the assessment might ask questions about um, uh, swarming and swarm control. And you need actually done these things. Uh, to make sense of it uh, and, and to understand what you're talking about and get the most out of the assessment. Um, so, you know, at least a full year's beekeeping before going for the basic is, would be my advice. Mm. Oh, that's good to know. It's good to know. And one of the things I was just going to say, Wendy, because of my um, internet problems, I'm hoping you might be able to do this. Could you, in the chat, you see I've put a web link there for you, which is the, um, obviously there's a very structured 
Um, well, not very structured, but there is obviously a, a path which has been well thought out from the BBK in terms of a sort of a stepped approach as to which exams you take when. Yeah. Um, could you just sort of um, shed a little bit of light on that while we find um, there's a flow chart which we'll try and screen share so we can help people understand the journey that you take um, through. Would you mind just, um, in fact, while you're doing that, Wendy, if you can find that link. Um, uh, it's not showing up for me now. Do you want me to, to, to search for it? Uh, yeah, just search um, BBKA examination structure in Google. And actually, anybody else out there who wants to do that, you can. So BBKA yeah. examination structure in Google. And you'll find there's um, what's called an infographic, uh, which basically plots your journey as to from the basic, and you can take the theory or the practical route um, all the way through to sort of husbandry or, and all the way up into the sort of the master beekeeper level. So we'll try and get that onto the screen so um, we can talk this through. But what's the, what's the general path that a beekeeper can take, um, Val or John, um, through the exam series? How does that work? Well, the starting point is the basic assessment for everybody, um, wh wh whether they've got a lot of experience or, or they are beginners. Uh, and that's just an oral assessment, it takes about an hour, nothing too threatening. Um, and it just ensures that every beekeeper has a basic level of beekeeping knowledge to start with. And once they've taken the basic, then they have two options. Uh, they can carry on with their practical route, uh, and or they can take the written route, depending on where their interests lie. Um, they need to have had two years beekeeping experience before they tackle the written route, um, and they need to have a little bit more experience before they go on, on the practical. Um, so the general husbandry now, it's, it's five years uh, before tackling that. Shall I say something about that practical route, a bit more on that? Yeah, most definitely. I think it's because I'm certainly I was never the theory side. So yeah, you prefer the. I mean, we have both routes in recognition that some people are just never going to be interested in the theory um, and and are not going to want to do that, but do want to take their practical beekeeping further. Um, the idea behind the practical assessments is that they do assess um, uh, beekeepers to the level of knowledge that they are gaining as years go on. The basic is at the beginning. The general husbandry after five years gives them time to learn thoroughly the other basic beekeeping methods um, that they need for the assessment. So things um, like swarm control, like manipulations, um, repairing uh, nucleuses, um, queen rearing at, at a simple level. These sorts of things need practice. So they need a few years to build up the colonies, feel confident in all of these uh, operations that beekeepers are doing year in and year out, really. Um, and once they've built up their, their skills and confidence in that, then they're ready to have a go with the general husbandry. The difference about the general husbandry is this is the only assessment that takes place on, on the beekeeper's own bees. So the assessors travel to the beekeeper's apiary and see their own setup and their own um, extracting and honey processing facilities. So it's, it's a very important assessment, really. And, and I think probably those people would have taken it, who've taken it would agree, it's probably the most nerve-wracking assessment of the lot. Because, you, you know, you've got assessors coming to look at your own bees. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a big deal. And you want to get that them in. That must be quite scary. You can. Yeah? It must be really scary. Yeah, I, I can understand that. And um, Wendy, have you had any chance with that... Um, uh, yeah, I've got the infographic. Um, okay, look. so if on your left-hand side, when you wiggle your mouse, there should be a little blue box with an arrow in it, and you should be able to screen share from that, and you can select your screen, and then we can just show the infographic, and people can see how that moves um, moves through. Sorry, I'm. Uh, uh, sorry, a little green, a little green screen with a little um, white. With an arrow, arrow in screen it. share. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you can just pick yeah. the box. And hopefully that will show it. And, um, uh, showing you us at the moment. Okay, so pick the white one and then just do screen share. Um, Can you see it? Has that done it? I don't know. No, it may not have done. Okay, no. don't worry. All right, no, not to worry. We'll, we'll move on. And what I'll do is I'll just make sure that that's, um, that's shared in the, um, 
uh, in the article that we'll do to follow all this up so people can actually use that infographic. And if you've got a website or if you're running an association, you can use that infographic to give to, um, to actually put on your own website and um, use it for your own members as well. It's there for that reason. Um, so let's just sort of work through this. Now, we've had a question in from Pablo earlier on about books. And John, I know you mentioned briefly about books earlier on. Um, why don't we start with you, John, in terms of recommended books? Wendy, I know you've got some thoughts on this as well. So, John, which educational resources should people be looking at um, to help them with all their exams? That's a very difficult question. We've got a, a book list which can be downloaded from the BBKA website. I think for the basic, you just want some of the general texts. And Clive de Brain's Practical Beekeeping, Ted Hooper's Guide to Bees and Honey, and um, there's, there's a couple of BBKA books as well, um, should be adequate. When people move on to the higher levels, as Val has suggested, then you need to go for more books. But I think it's very difficult for us to say about too many, because it's only a few pages in some of the books, because there's a lot of different topics in the syllabuses. Now, have you got the list in front of you, Val? Because you might be able to say more about it. Uh, the book list. Book list, yes. Yeah. Um, what we've done now to try to help people is we've separated them out and put a list of books at the top, which uh, we would recommend any beekeeper to have in their library as being the most useful books to use towards any of the examinations. And there's quite substantial amounts in them. Um, and then we have sections for each of the different examinations and assessments where you can pick out other titles. Some you might already have or you might be able to get them from uh, your association library um, and you know there will be bits and pieces in each of those specific to that module. But you don't need all the books we recommend on the book list to do the exams and assessments. Just pick out one. Oh, Val, is, is it, um, yeah. is it this what I'm, what I'm showing in front of you at the moment? Uh, this is yes. on the BBKA website. website. And there's a book list option there somewhere. Where's it gone? So we've got all the training courses in here. You've got examinations and assessments. We've got past papers, book reviews. Uh, if you go uh, to exams and assessments. Okay, look, in here, yeah. Yeah. So this is all on the BBKA website. And as you can see up here, you've got www.bbka.org.uk forward slash learn forward slash examinations underscore assessment. So everything is in... Um, it's working towards it, aren't we? And then at the bottom there, uh, I think we're most likely to see the book list under modules, because that's when they're most useful. So if you click on modules... Okay. But, I mean, regardless, there is so much information on here as well. So it's, um, it's good for people to have a good look around, isn't it? Oh, it is. All the syllabuses are on there, um, just okay. free to download. Uh, there's a whole selection of past exam papers free to download down the bottom of there and we've got under documents can you see the book list yeah That's so there's this third one there yeah okay and is that um, it looks to be a pdf as well so people can yes. people can print out the pdf and they can uh, get a whole lot of stuff on there yeah that's very handy yeah look at that there you go. okay yeah. well see so what i'll do as well um um i will in the article that we do to host this um, video on there, we'll also put a link to this as well, so people can just um, click it immediately and download it. So that's nice and um, nice and easy for everybody. Um, just we mentioned about this um, infographic earlier on. Um, this is the one which we put on the Beecroft website, so beecroft.com forward slash BBKA examination structure, and you'll see here what Val was talking about earlier. Um, which is the basic assessment, and then you can go down the theory route or the husbandry, um, microscopy. I actually said it for the first time. It's incredible. <laughs> I can never say <laughs> my first name. <laughs> you know that. Wendy, you know the problems I have with my microscopy. Absolutely. <laughs> and it goes all the way down. But the good thing for you, if you're running an association website or you're running your own, is that at the bottom here, you've got, um, you can share this image by using this bit of code onto your own site. So please do go ahead and, um, and use that. You're, uh, you're more than welcome to. Um, you're more than welcome to. Okay, let me just come off of that as a screen share document. Um, one question, by the way, if any of you, I know there's quite a few of you watching this actually, so thank you for watching. Um, if you're watching this on the Beecroft website, underneath the, um, uh, the little box where you're watching this, I think there's a little thing saying ask a question. 
If you do want to ask a question to John, Val, Wendy, or myself, please do just pop a little note in there if you're watching the live show, which is a Wednesday night. Um, and we'll actually pick up the question. So, so please do pop that in. Um, Pablo, if you are watching, I hope that's answered your question on the book front. There's a lot of information in there, which we'll make sure we're sharing it later. Um, can, can I just say on the book front, James, that, yes, um, that Beecraft have got, uh, or they publish six books that are relevant to various modules. There are two for the general module, um, which are Honey Bee Inside and Out, Honey Bee Around and About, um, by Celia Davis. Uh, for module three, we've got healthy bees are happy bees. Module five, um, which is a really good publication, is our Honey Bee Illustrated, which is 48 pages of um, the anatomy and uh, you know, brilliantly well well done by uh, by Margaret and Dave. And um, essays in beekeeping history by Carl Schauler and module eight and practical microscopy by Bob Mora obviously for the microscopy section and um, at the moment uh, and I think probably for the foreseeable future but to support um, Beecraft's support of everybody that are, is wanting to, to study um, we are offering these if ten or more um, books are ordered together to one address through an association or a, the association doing it or individuals who are looking to study a particular topic we're offering a 20% discount on purchases of 10 books or more um, okay. and not all it doesn't have to be 10 of the same book it can be you know a half a dozen two or three of each or, or whichever so it's according to whatever course is taking place I guess within the associations at the moment so um, you know that's that's our, our way of supporting education because it's that's key to us this year that we are supporting um, uh, the BBKA and the uh, all, anybody that's studying for an examination or wants to. No, absolutely. Now, just um, I'm going to share this screen for you as well. So this is on uh, the Beecroft shop, and you'll see that we've got all the study notes here, which relate to modules one to three and five to eight of the exams. Um, when you mentioned the microscopy book, which is this one here, which uh, did very, very well and has actually continued to do so. So there's some very, very good books in there in terms of um, uh, your study, which is uh, which is probably worthwhile. Um, just a quick one, and uh, Val and... Before we go there, James, Sorry, you have mentioned John Williams, who showed it up there, starting out with bees. It's different to the other beginner's books because it does it month by month all the other books do a topic by a topic and some people prefer that so I think it's worth even knowing that the book's different and then well like to buy from Beecraft. Okay so just to just to reiterate that because I know your sound's pretty bad there um, John the book by John Williams which is called Starting Out With Bees it works on a month by month basis rather than a topic by topic so particularly good if you're beginning um, if I think that's what I heard you say there John um, looking at beginning beekeeping, beekeeping so it can actually uh, work through the progress. Um, Val, I had a question from Facebook actually um, from Barbara um, and I'm just going to uh, read this out to you if you don't mind. It's to do with the sort of the natural beekeeping side um, and it says why is there no assessment available for people who keep top bar hives to pass a basic assessment? Um, they almost fell uh, from the start. Um, uh, so the syllabus is more geared towards conventional beekeeping. Um, and obviously there are you know, beekeepers with top power hives and, and will there be any facility in the future to, to look at this sort of um, side of, of beekeeping, do you think? Yeah, well, the role of the exam board is to monitor um, developments in beekeeping and uh, you know, change and modify the syllabuses to suit what's happening there. So it is always possible that there could be some modifications made for it. At the moment, um, we're feeling and finding that the basic sub syllabus as it stands can be applied equally well to natural beekeeping. We have actually had a number of natural beekeepers take the assessment. Um, they have done it on uh, normal hives, normal colonies, um, and you know, managed very well with it. Um, but we, we don't see any reason why we shouldn't be able to take the basic assessment on the natural beekeeper's hive. But you know, we're starting to get feedback now from beekeepers about this, and uh, you know, it's something that we're continuing to monitor. 
Yeah, I think it's probably one of those ones where it, it, we've always got to be open to, to sort of comments and suggestions and, and moving it forward. I mean, there's, there's obviously a strong enough movement now in the natural beekeeping circles and top bar being obviously one aspect of it yeah. um, that it's probably worthwhile considering it's it. So becoming more and more popular, yeah. And uh, uh, not, not just beginner beekeepers, but experienced beekeepers as well are, are starting to include natural colonies within their own other norm you know I say normal mm. beekeeping I shouldn't say that should I uh, but you know traditional beekeeping methods yeah I think I think it's just it, it's the consideration of that you know one way is not always necessarily the, the correct way and, and I think it needs you know there's, there's got to be an aspect of um, of openness to that and, and you know, there are so-called conventional beekeepers who do it wrong and there are natural beekeepers who do it wrong and I think it's just that understanding isn't it so um yeah. As a suggestion, uh, Barbara, if you are watching this, do pop me um, an email or a, a message in Facebook, and what I'll do is I'll pass any sort of thoughts you have or suggestions, and, and anybody else for that matter in that in that ilk who wants to push that, yeah. and I happily pass it on to Val if you're okay with that. So that's fine. Another good thing. Okay, so look, what's the um, the sort of the final thing? I know um, we're very fortunate within Beecroft to have um, our chairman is a is a master beekeeper. Um, you know, that's where sort of everybody aims to be. Um, yeah. Yeah, what, what is what is the end game for the beekeeping um, exams? Where, where is a master beekeeper the the sort of celebrity beekeeper, or um, or is there something else? Oh yeah, there, there is further. Uh, um, following master beekeeper, there's the NDB National Diploma in Beekeeping, uh, which takes it on to that extra level. Uh, I think that's probably about the highest you would go for for in depth beekeeping. Um, but but for the BBKA, our end point is Master Beekeeper. Um, and, and then, as far as we're concerned, these are the people who will be passing on their knowledge to other beekeepers um, you know, by means of, of giving talks or uh, writing for magazines, for Beecraft, etc. <laughs> and uh, you know, encouraging other people to take examinations as well and helping teaching and tutoring and mentoring. Um, mm. So... The, I was talking about the general husbandry assessment on the practical side. There is another layer above that, which is the advanced husbandry. That's the last practical before Master Beekeeper. Um, and that one is geared towards teaching others. So uh, it's got five elements in it. Um, it's uh, uh, giving a lecture, short lecture, giving a garden demonstration, um, demonstrating some uh, grafting, talking about queen rearing. And, and so on. So it's uh, you know a lot of the same skills, but pointed really at uh, training and teaching others. Uh, so so that's the last practical side before master beekeeper. Hmm. Yeah? I say, what I say, James, is that um, you mentioned earlier the practical route and the theory route. A master beekeeper has to pass both of the all the exams in the theory route, all the modules, or seven of them, and all the practical exams that Val's mentioned, then when you've got those under your belt, you become a master beekeeper, which is the top level in the British Beekeepers Association. Yeah, it's an important distinction, isn't it, I suppose. It's, um, there's a sort of layers outside of that which you can um, you can attain. OK, well, so um, sort of coming to the end of this, really, um, the most important bit is how, uh, Val, probably more at you here, how can people find out more about uh, the BBKA exams, um, is it something they can go to their local associations to talk about? Um, is it independent? H how does that all work? If you could just um, give them some idea. Right, yeah, yeah two rules. I mean, one is, as you've already shown, uh, they can have a look on the BBKA website and have a trawl through the information there and get a lot, lot of detail about the assessments and how to apply for them and, and how to go about it. But each area has got their own examination secretary. So the other the thing they can do is to find out who their exam secretary is for their area. There is a list on the website, uh, or you could find uh, phone Stoney office and they would tell you. Um, uh, find out who your local person is and talk to them, and they will tell you exactly how it works in your area. The, the basic assessment takes place in your own area uh, at, at a local apiary. Obviously, general husbandry is your own bees. Uh, the module examinations uh, take place at a venue somewhere near you no more than an hour away, depending on how big your county is. Um, and, uh, so there's a lot of information you can get from your local exam secretaries. Hmm. 
Okay. Right, James seems to have hung again. Yeah. <laughs> Um, is it is it necessary to to be a member of an association to to study for the um, the initial beekeeping? Yeah, no, no, it isn't. Um, you don't have to be a member of an association at the um, basic level. You don't have to be a member of the B BBKA, right? It's open to non-members as well. Once you get above that level, then yes, you either have to be a member of the BBK or pay a surcharge because the, the exams get much more expensive. Um, right. But we have people um, uh, across the world taking the basic examination. Now they, we, we, our assessors go everywhere on holiday, and while they're on holiday, they <laughs> do a couple of assessments. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, we can't be bad. <laughs> that's, a, that's a nice job, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's something yeah, definitely that something... expenses, though. <laughs> oh, I was thinking that's maybe where Simon's gone to Nepal. In fact, uh, I think, think he... someone's taking a basic while he's out there. I think he might be, yes. That's what pretty I cool, isn't it? That's, that's dedication to the cause, <laughs> to, do a, <laughs> to be an assessor while in Nepal. Brilliant. But, uh, that's great, isn't it? All right, well, I don't want to take this on too long, so um, let's just have one final tip. All right, because Wendy, I know you've taken some of these exams. I'm sure you have. Um, let's get one tip from each of you about how you can pass um, pass an exam. So, John, come on. As as the new head honcho at the BBKA, um, what would you say is your biggest tip from all your years of these exams? Right. My suggestion is read the question and don't panic. Can I, I'd like to give a little example to that because there might be people here that failed module one in the November exam. We had a question there asking how to do swarm control when you couldn't find the queen and the methods are well defined. The people that didn't do very well generally said, ah, we'll find the queen and they went on to give a standard swarm control method. That wasn't what was required so read the question. If it says you have to do it without finding the Queen. Don't proceed to tell us how to find the Queen. So I reiterate, read the question and ask what we want you to answer. That's my tip. Gosh, that's a real... I remember that in school when I was younger. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> and I always failed. Always. I never read the question through. So, yeah, no, valid point, though. Um, Val, what would you say is your, um, is your key, key point? Well, John's uh, talked about the, uh, the the written module side. I'll talk on the practical side, and that is look at the syllabus carefully and practice. Practice all the techniques that are mentioned in the syllabus, not just once, but several times, and build them into your beekeeping so that you can do them automatically. So okay. preparation and practice. Practice, practice, practice. And, uh, and Wendy, what would you say? What, what's, your, what's your tip? I would say, well, I would, I would totally agree with John. Read the question. It's very easy to, to misinterpret what you're reading. Um, perhaps if you talk a lot, James, that you don't necessarily read a lot. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> uh, and I think, really, don't panic. Um, you know, I, I think the points that, that, that have been made for the theory and the practical are, are absolutely ideal. And... It's trying to keep nerves out of the way as much as possible because as soon as you mention exam or assessment, it's the um, you're immediately on high alert, and um, I think that's that's not a good thing to be in any situation. But particularly when you're dealing with bees, you want to be as relaxed as possible. I think, and that to me, the goes into the bees. If you're relaxed about it, then. Um, I think they're they're much easier to work with. Absolutely, I have to say to, to continue that. My tip was going to be don't panic, and relax and enjoy it. Because one of the things that I was very scared about beforehand were the assessors. I, I was very frightened that these guys were, were were amazing beekeepers. But you know what? They put you at ease instantly. There's no pressure on it. They're just asking questions and they talk you very calmly through it. I can't obviously speak for every examiner, but. Um, <laughs> Certainly in my case, my biggest fear actually turned into the nicest bit of the whole experience, which is, you know, you are being questioned, but in the nicest possible way ever. I remember sitting there with a nice cup of tea and a biscuit uh, and just talking about what we all love, which is beekeeping. And, and it felt more like a chat than it did a, a discussion. 
obviously that's in the theory, not necessarily on the on the module and the practical side. But um, yeah, don't be afraid. Just have a go. Um, can, I just say, can I just say on that, James? Actually, mm. for for anybody that's listening, that's a new beekeeper and hasn't had any experience of a bee inspector coming around to your own hives. That's exactly the same situation. Everybody gets very hyped up about that, but they are great people. They're really helpful, really calm, uh, and they're, they're not coming to criticize. They come, offer advice, discuss things, and um, they will sometimes learn something from you about the way where your bees are or um, perhaps your hive benches, you know, the way that you actually work with your bees. So it can be a, a two-way situation with the bee inspector, uh, and I just feel People are very wary, very frightened of bee inspectors coming around, but there's no need to be at all. They're exactly the same as the assessors, and um, you know they they come as friends to help, not to criticise. Yeah, totally. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Um, yeah, yeah. One last thing, I think, uh, John, you mentioned when we had a chat on Monday that there was some there were some changes to the syllabuses, I think, um, that you wanted to mention. Is that right? Yes. What, what we've done this year is we've made the basic assessment, the first one which Val's been talking about, there's four sections now. There's um, a section, an oral section on swarm control as well as gen general beekeeping because what we found is that some people weren't very good on swarm control but were still passing. And really um, we want to be sure that beekeepers are safe with their beekeeping that's one of our objectives and to keep the bees in their garden and not have them going out into um, should we say people's gardens elsewhere who don't like bees is, is an important part of beekeeping so swarm control is important and it's now got its section in the exam having said that the exam will still last only an hour as Val said and um, the practical bits about 20 minutes, and the chat bits going to be about 40 minutes. Okay, doke. All right, there we go. So that's the basic stuff. All right. Well, look. On that note, I think we're going to finish it there. Um, thanks for everyone who's um, who's been watching. Um, and we've got another one starting, uh, another hangout next month. Although I'm not sure the subject's set in stone yet. So if anyone's got anything in particular they'd like to talk about or discuss. Um, or would like us to bring on some experts, or even if you yourself want to come on, um, please do come and join us, and we'd be more than welcome to it. Um, but in the meantime, John, Val, thank you so much for joining us from, from the BBKA side of things. And Wendy, thank you for, for looking after me as I keep dropping in and out uh, continually. And I'll probably drop out before this actually ends again. So um, <laughs> there we are. So at least uh, nothing more to say other than the fact that um, do check us out, b-craft.com. Um, the informed voice of British beekeeping. That's what we're here to do, here to talk about, here to chat about, and, uh, and hopefully to help you um, in your journey to become a better beekeeper. So thanks, everyone, and hopefully we'll see you next month. Okay, bye. 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 bye.